Welcome to our study of the lens formula of the mirror and the converging lens. So, after a short break, here we are again doing yet another experiment. Another shirt, another experiment. This one we're going to do the concave mirror and the converging lens, yet again picking off some fairly low hanging fruit in the area. Now the lens is easy enough. Most people have a magnifying glass or a pair of old glasses for reading which are just lying around somewhere. We are going to also do the concave mirror, to which you say, I don't have a concave mirror. And I say, you lie, you lie, you lie, because you do have a concave mirror. You have a spoon. This is a soup spoon, probably the most concave mirror of all the spoons. Unless you have a very, very posh set, which uh, is one of these things you can't actually eat soup off because it's so flat. Most of them have very short focal lengths, so it's going to make the experiment interesting in this section. And you need quite a high powered lens to get a, a, a reasonable bench size image. So we're going to do these two experiments in this room. I'm going to start with the lights on and then I'll show you what the effect is with the light off. I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference. You can tell me. So, for the light source, I have a fairly ordinary torch, which I can change the focus. For the object, I'm using a tea strainer. Most people have tea strainers. It forms a nice pattern in the torch. Obviously, I need to measure distances. Here I have my uh, measuring tape. And here, I'm using this as a screen. Now, as I said, the focal length is very short. So I'm going to use the source here. Focus it on the, and attempt to focus that onto the screen. Okay, now we switch to voiceover as I frantically attempt to focus a spoon onto a breadboard. Well, yeah, that's it. That's focus. Yeah, I'll try it again. Move the thing further away. You've got to change the uh, image distance because uh, the object distance is so small. But there, I'm focused it again. There we are. And move it closer still that's closer that's three different positions for v giving us hopefully three different positions for you yeah 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 i actually should have taped that onto the front shouldn't i yeah well i can do you can see the definitely see the pattern on the breadboard it's better on the wall behind of course and then i write them down yeah i should have sort of stressed that you're supposed to write it down first yeah holding the spoon up this time which seems to be better oh that's me pretending to do it properly and measure the distance of the board to do the lens section, we essentially set up a straight optical bench. The ruler is forming the measuring tape. I have the thing, which I'm going to place at 35. Now, I now move the converging lens until I get a focus. I think you'll agree. Probably run the other way, might be better. There. There. So now it's at 24. So V is 24. U going all the way out to 33 is at nine. And here we are again back in voiceover where I'm frantically trying to focus the magnifying glass onto the breadboard. Now I'm tapping it so I can see exactly where the distances are from the screen to the magnifying glass, that's V obviously, the image distance, and from the T-strainer to the lens, that's U. Changing position now, and I'm gonna do it again so I get more than one reading. There's me holding it so I can say, you're supposed to be looking straight down to avoid parallax. Remember, you're supposed to look straight down onto the measuring tape. Okay, give up, you can't find it. Why can't you find it? Because he is at the moment inside the focal length. The distance between the T-strain and the lens is smaller than the actual focal length. Now, how can we be sure we don't do this? Ah! Of course, one of the problems of this experiment is you're trying to form a virtual image because you're essentially inside the focal length. So you have to find an approximation of the focal length beforehand. And to do that, you have to use a distant object, usually the window. And we focus the light from the window onto a screen. Now, I don't think you'll be able to see that, but I then, when I have the light focused, a sharp image of the window onto this, I measure the distance between 
the lens and the screen with a meter rule and that gives me an approximation for the focal length because light coming from distant objects focuses roughly at the focal point so the focal length is the distance from the focal point to the lens and here I am once again now of course you can't see the image which is a terrible pity I tried it in a light room I tried it in a dark room and with the camera you couldn't see really the image onto the screen you can nicely see my ball patch I think uh, here I am writing down the distances very carefully. Oh, look, look how carefully I'm doing this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you like the shirt, by the way? Uh, it's kind of nice, isn't it? Uh, I did actually turn the lights out and got this, which I think you'll agree, um, in camera terms, is way worse. And wasn't any easier either, to be perfectly honest. Um, I tried the spoon as well, and as you can see, you can't even see these under these conditions. So just to go over the two precautions that we have in this experiment, the first one is to avoid parallax when meeting the meter rule, and the second one we haven't mentioned is to find the sharpest position of the image. You're always looking for the sharpest position of the image. So now we move on to the calculations. We make a table of the U's and V's values we have measured, just so that it would represent exactly the same as the way we would see it on an exam paper. And then for each set of data, we do a calculation of F. We cannot average U and V and do one calculation. We have to do the th calculation three times. Here we are, 1 over 11, 1 over 22, which is our first sort of figures. I've worked out the figures, and 1 over F is the total of those two. In order to find F, we find the reciprocal, 1 over F, which is on your calculator, usually on a shift button. So we do the calculation again. Here I am again working out 1 over 8 this time, 1 over 32. I work out the reciprocals. I add them together. Gosh, it's actually quite cold in here. I don't really, maybe I should turn the heater on. I still, still like the shirt, actually. It's only Tesco's, I think. Is this one of Tesco's? This might be in French Connection. Can't remember. Okay, got to do it third time. Here we go. Oh, I've, I've speeded up the film, believe it or not. I don't actually write at this speed. Well, you know I don't write at this speed. You've been watching me write on the board for years and years and years. You know how slow I am. That's why I do all the projections. Yeah, it's still good though, isn't it? My hand's getting a bit hairy. Anyway, so you do all that calculation, blah, 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 and I'm about to run off the bottom of the screen. Oh, I'm finding the average. There I go. Take, add in all up, divide by three, which you can't see, and I'm getting 6.8. I've just put this at the end so you can see all the calculations. You've got to lay it all out and you've got to put the units in.